you've taken the first step and you have a backup communications plan in place, but do you have everything to protect it in the event of an EMP? Hey there and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at the Mission Darkness Titan RF Faraday Fabric. Just got this in from Amazon, so I'm really anxious to open it up, see what it looks like, and we're going to test it out on a couple bow fangs to see if it really does the job. And I apologize about the tape job right here. They had it folded over when they sent it and taped it, and it didn't come off clean, so the presentation is not best today. And I did notice that it says there's a bonus 36-inch Titan RF conductive tape on the inside, which was a nice surprise because I did not see that on the listing when I ordered it. So let's get right into it, open it up. Okay, so the large bag itself, it happens to be resealable, but on the inside you get a, looks like a booklet card. Wow, about all their different products, lockers, health, apparel, testing app, that's kind of cool. Proven performance little chart. They're testing information on what they've done with it. And I think that's probably going to be the tape right there connected to it. Let's see if we can get this gently off. Build a Faraday enclosure using their fabric. You do it yourself in closures and projects. Project signal proof rooms tents. So this is kind of cool. They give you a little a little bit of a DIY sheet with it. So this would be our conductive tape. And this is the backing, I believe, right here. You would just peel that and you could tape it onto whatever you're needing to. And this is the fabric right here. And I apologize that the light is bright from the work light here, shining right at it. It's... um. It is silver, but it's not as bright silver as y'all are probably looking at. It's actually kind of a more dull gray silver. Definitely not very thin at all. I mean, very thick at all. You can look. It almost feels like really thick tissue paper, almost. So, that's all the contents of the bag. Very straightforward and simple. So, what we'll do is we'll put it to the test by... Turn on a couple bow fangs. We'll be on simplex. And for the sakes of this experiment, one of the bow fangs will be here. I'll wrap it up in this, similar to how it would be wrapped if we made a little carrying pouch for, say, your phone or your tablet or anything like that. So I'll try to do my best to keep it just on a layer or two thick, and that's it. And I will be walking over to the other side of the house, powering up the bow fang, and we'll see if we can hear it. Of course, we'll see how this works. All right, so for this test, we're going to be using our bow fangs. No, these are not the ever popular UV5Rs, but these are the UV5R third generations. These are the BF F8HPs or the Bravo Foxtrot, Foxtrot 8 Hotel Papas with their standard batteries in them. So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and turn them on. Frequency, Frequency mode. mode. Our lovely greeting as always. I have them on VFO frequency mode, so as you can see here, if the light will show it, it's going to be on the top line there, frequency A or line A at 146.520 on the 2 meter simplex. We're really going to turn this up, so one will stay here. And just to give you a loudness test, I will be walking away now, that you can hear it clearly, and that this, and this signal should come in clearly. Radio check. All right, so you can see it's nice and loud. So I'm gonna do my best here. We're gonna wrap this one up in this fabric without cutting it or whatever, and just see if we can still get the results that we're looking for. It's a pretty large piece of fabric. I've actually got it spread out on the entire work. Uh, workbench here. So, again, to try our best, we're going to just take the bow thing here. I'm going to fold it over. 
I want to get it like it's in a pouch bag. And we'll fold it one more time. And for sake of experiment, I will fold this over. Kind of a little envelope bag there. Okay. Now what we'll do is I'll walk back to the other side of the house, fire it up, and we'll see if we can hear it from here. Okay, so we still heard that. I clearly heard it across the house since I have it turned up. So, um, it's probably again some leak or somewhere in here. So we'll just do it again and fold it over. Actually, since we've already got it this way. We'll just fold it over twice. Now, I do know in the principle of a Faraday cage, everything needs to be as sealed as possible, which does mean tape, no, cr uh, no cracks, no openings, anything. But again, for the sake of the experiment, we're just going to see if wrapping it at least in enough without any taped and closed ends will still get the job done. So attempt number two, you saw it was at least folded over twice more, still kind of tucked in here. Hopefully the ends are closed off enough. Let's give it a shot. All right, so test number two seemed to work. Just that couple folds over, because I still had it turned up, didn't touch the volume, and I was about 20-ish or 30 feet away, um, actually through at least one more wall, and I didn't hear anything. So that's great. And uh, again, this is a little 5-watt radio, um, and it stopped that from 20 feet away or so. So to me, that would be a success. Again, I had to fold it over, but... That's not that many layers. If we were to do it, I guess, correctly, again, it was sealed properly. All right, so I do want you all to understand, though, that when it comes to EMP protection, um, there's many variables involved, uh, whether it is natural or man-made, how strong the signal is, et cetera, et cetera. At the time of this recording, it's April 5th, going into April 6th of 2024, and the major eclipse that's supposed to happen at, I think, once in a lifetime will be here in a couple days on April 8th, 2024. And there's speculation, rumors going around that such an event may happen. And if that's the case, we may be looking at an actual grid down scenario, or at least enough damage to the grid that would set us back for quite a while, several years at least, and affect major infrastructure. So I'm looking at at least a little bit of protection, quote, insurance. Um, in case that happens so that their backup communication still works. Even if an EMP, again, mat natural or man-made, was to knock out, or not necessarily knock out the cell phones, but the cell phone towers and the infrastructure was affected, our cell phones are not going to be any worth a dime anyway. So, guys, always be getting ready. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, 
I'd like you to share it to someone you know and you care about. Anyone that's looking into some backup comms and other protection and equipment and stuff like that. Appreciate if you send them the video. And until next time, catch you around the video. And yes, that was a moth. Till next time, guys.